In 2006, the government of the Republic of Namibia, then headed by the former president, His Excellency Hifike Punye Pohamba, instructed the then Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Libertine Amadila, to consult communities that suffered under the German colonial rule. In order to improve the social and economic conditions of those communities left out, the government of the Republic of Namibia, together with the German government, developed a program called the Namibian German Special Initiative, also known as the NGSIP. The Namibia German Special Initiative program started uh, way back in 2006 when Dr. Libadin Amadila, the then um, Deputy Prime Minister, was tasked to I uh, have a, a thorough consultation with uh, those affected affected communities um, across uh, the country, and then after that uh, consultation assessment, uh, Dr. Libertina Madila produced um, a thorough a detailed report, which was then uh, given to um, the National Planning Commission to further. Um, we all remember that uh, in the year two thousand four. We had the 100-year commemoration of the um, military suppression of the Herrera uprising against the colonial German regime that days. And um, during those commemoration events in 2004, the then German Minister for Economic Cooperation, Mrs. Heidemarie witscherich zoll was here attending the event and asking and giving a plea for forgiveness in the presence of the then Minister of Land Reform, Mr. Puamba, and uh, the then uh, Chief, Herero Chief, um, Thiruwako. Both listened and both accepted the extended hands by the German Minister. I think this was a very important event and very symbolic. And as a follow-up and within the context of this event, the German government, together with the Namibian government, developed the idea and then further on the concept and then the implementation of the special initiative program. According to Honorable Lucia Ipumbu, the initiative came at the right time as the government embarked on national development programs. A number of these projects are tailor-made to their needs. Uh, we have projects in terms of livestock distributions that were targeting specifically the marginalized communities. The aim of distributing those livestock is to make sure that these communities are able to sustain themselves in the future so that they don't depend on government for handouts. They multiply and breed these livestock so that they benefit the generations to come and at the end of the day they will be able to obtain some food and to, in the long run, sell this and make some income. Since its inception in 2006 under the banner of the NGSIP, a lot was achieved. I would say the program is in the process of achieving or will achieve its objectives because it's still in running. Uh, it is to end by September this year. Uh, but then uh, looking at the projects that have been completed so far and handed over to the beneficiaries, I would say the success rate, the success rate uh, is very high. And uh, for sure, 
uh, we are confident that for all those identified projects which are under implementation, we will be successfully completed by the end of the program implementation. We also have uh, commercial centers and campsites. This is uh, aimed at augmenting business skills not only for developing the skills but for overall economic performance in terms of them participating in the business uh, as, as such that they start selling the little that they can produce and they earn an income for themselves and their families and this will also then uh, in the long run contribute to poverty reduction because they are now able to survive on their own. There are projects like schools and schools infrastructures, community hostels. The, these are to make the learning environment conducive. Uh, for instance, we know in the rural areas where in most cases the children travel long distances to schools and we also have, for instance, in the marginalized communities where the culture does not allow the kids to uh, attend lessons every day Sometimes they are expected to look after livestock. If we build community hostels and keep them inside the schools, it will provide a conducive learning environment for them, and then they will be able to study, pass, come back, and sustain their families. With more than 20 projects implemented in 2015 alone, more programs had been undertaken while others are still envisaged, explains Matthew Huahose. We have four different main uh, programs uh, that relates to schools and youth centers and sports fields. Those, that's one category. The second category is uh, creating multi-purpose cultural centers, commercial centers, that type for particularly for uh, um, traditional authorities, village councils, and, 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 and the communi rural communities, uh, let me say. And then thirdly, we have uh, livestock uh, program. And then fourthly, we have um, water projects, water-related projects. So those are the four main uh, categories. But besides that, we also have uh, other smaller programs like uh, ones of VIP toilets, one food for work programs, um, quarantine programs. Uh, so uh, some of the requests that we that we thought would make immediate impact in that particular community. Uh, the sixth category is the capacity building. We 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 initially when the program was um, designed, there was no component of capacity building, but as we are implementing, we realize that most of the communities do not actually have needed uh, skills in the, in the programs that they were proposing. Therefore, we brought in what we call the capacity building across all those four different programs. Um, According to the social advisor for the program, Dr. Namo Musulwe, respective communities are taken into consideration during the planning and implementation stages. After the conceptualization of this program, uh, there was initially um, a consultant's uh, team which was engaged uh, to go and uh, revisit the, the projects which the communities had uh, initially submitted through the office of uh, the Deputy Prime Minister by then. And uh, they, in other words, they did the feasibility study because what came from the community at that time <clears throat> was uh, kind of a shopping list. So it was just a list of projects. And these projects were submitted through the respective constituents' offices, uh, meaning uh, the constituents' offices were now like the coordinating office. Um, Though, of course, these requests came from various communities through their traditional authorities, uh, through their village councils, and then submitted and consolidated through those respective constituencies. And then only thereafter, they went through to the regional council and then uh, to the office of, 
of the deputy prime minister by then. Consultation with the communities became necessary and a guiding tool for the implementation process. The core element of the initiative was the fact that the communities were actually in the driving chair. They were the ones who determined through their needs what to do, where to do it, and how to do it. And this was the determining factor then for the German government together, but mainly with the Namibian government, then the Deputy Prime Minister Amatila, and the National Planning Commission to start drawing up a concept for the overall initiative, but always based on what input had come from the communities. The role of these consultants, uh, you know, um, uh, team, they had to go back and uh, look at uh, how feasible some of those projects were. They had to uh, redirect some of the requested projects to some went to the uh, government capital uh, capital funds like if say the community had requested for a bigger road to be reconstructed and so on where there was duplication so they had to realign some of those projects now when that exercise was done uh, they came up with a feasibility study document and in that document um, all the projects per constituents as prioritized through their feasibility study exercise, they were all indicated in that document in a nutshell. And, and us, when we came in uh, to implement now the Namibia German Special Initiative Program, when we came in as a team, we had to use that, we had to implement what was in that document. That was now the starting point for us. So meaning that we had to revisit the projects. In fact, what happened was that as we came in, uh, maybe four or six years after that feasibility study had taken place, so meaning that uh, time had elapsed. So maybe some things had changed. Some of the priorities which they had uh, set at that time might have changed. So we had to go back and meet uh, all those communities, had discussions with them, explained, reminded them that these are the projects which you submitted and these are the ones which were prioritized when the previous team was here. And, uh, these were purely community meetings. The successful implementation of the program depended upon the commitment of the Namibian government. It was our role to ensure that the ministry, the responsible ministries take over from there on. For instance, when we hand over the schools, we expect the Ministry of Education to take care from there onward. When we hand over water infrastructures, we expect the Ministry of Agriculture to ensure that those infrastructures are taken good care of, they guard against vandalism, but we don't entirely leave it in their hands. Since we played a critical role in obtaining the funds that made it possible for these projects to come in existence, it remains our responsibility to ensure that those infrastructures remain intact, they remain in good condition, and they are maintained and taken good care of. With every project we implement, the important thing is to see that the community or the people for whose benefit these projects are meant really tell us, yes, it's okay. Um, this is what we expected, and um, we at least try to achieve this level. Maybe we do not succeed all the time, but with this program, with the special initiative, we have reached a very high level of um, satisfaction. With the German government's commitments to help its counterpart eradicate poverty among the Namibians, future initiatives will always be welcomed. First and foremost, it is necessary and important to remind us again that Germany and Namibia have been engaged in a very close, and I would argue, a very successful uh, economic partnership for 25 years now. During the past 25 years, we have implemented, again, always together, numerous amounts of projects in various sectors of the country which based on the national planning and the economic and social objectives of the government have at least contributed to a large extent to the state of situation of Namibia as we see it today. Still is a lot to be done and therefore I can assure you and uh, all listeners and viewers that Germany will continue to be a very important and very high-ranking partner and determined partner for Namibia in the future years to come. 
whether we will have this type of program or anything else that remains to be seen. We have our regular communications and negotiations where we sit together at one table. We, I mean the Namibian as well as the German government, and we talk. And we always do only things that have been uh, that have been agreed by both of us. The primary beneficiaries of the NGSIP are selected rural communities in the seven regions, namely Erongo, Hardab, Karas, Komas, Kunene, Omaheke, and Oshodonjupa regions. I think that the development of 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 the the Ons kan toerisme ook hier aantrek met die dinge wat ons hier sal verkoop wat die toeriste aantrek. So ek hoop dit is een baie goeie development wat hier ingebring is. Ek wil net, vir, ek wil net vraag, kyk soos ons nou hier gehelp is om hierdie centrum te bou, dat hulle nog as hulle weet van ander mens wat vir ons kan help, dat daar nog ander mense kan inkom om vir ons te kan help en vir ons bieke geld sponsor, of met enige iets sponsor, soos die centrum staan nou net, so hier is niks nou hier binnen nie. So ons moet ons begin nou eer so, ons sal dit waardeer as ons nog help kan kry. Yeah, I would like that uh, really all the communities as well as the leaders would take care of this facility. Because I mean it's not at all day that one get such opportunities. So we must take care of it and use it to the best of all people. For a developing community, we have to use these opportunities to upgrade the quality of life of our people. We say thank you to all co collaborators consent well wish us towards the construction of this exciting uh, multi-purpose commercial center. It was not an easy task to facilitate the project and plan together with community of France Fontaine. We thank you, Namibia German Special Initiative Program. We are very much happy today to have received this furniture from the uh, Namibia German Special Initiative Program. And uh, we will take good care of it. The NGSIP was intended to benefit all Namibians in these areas and thus meant to actively support the government's policy on national reconciliation that contributed to poverty reduction and economic growth. <laughs> The teachers from here, from Oshoshekwa Primary School, and most importantly, the beneficiaries of the project, our beautiful learners, beautiful faces, who are looking at us. I would like to use this opportunity to welcome you all to this very historic occasion. I call on you to ensure that this facility, the hostel part of it, be registered with the Ministry of Education so that it become a government subsidized hostel so that learners can get the three meals per day. These kids are only relying on the school feeding program as we are speaking now, and that is only one meal per day during break time. So if the school is closed in the afternoon, they are just there on the teacher's mercy, the principal and the teacher's mercy. And they have to go back home every Friday. I don't know whether it is still the case, because the school cannot offer them a meal during the weekends. So every Friday they have to go back home, and then when they come back, they have to bring something back. The Namibia German Special Initiative have taken it up on itself. 
to upgrade infrastructures in various regions that have historical ties with the then German government, of which Kunene region is one. And Kunene region being special is the one that has the highest number of projects in the entire country. And the good thing about it is that a number of these projects are upgrade of school infrastructures. The German government, through its development bank, KFW, initially in 2006, allocated an amount of 20 million euros to this project. And later on, when they realized the amount allocated was not sufficient to cover for the projects envisaged and submitted. There was another allocation of 11 million that was done approximately two years ago to the project. And again, due to a number of challenges, recently, that was end of September, beginning of October, this project was again boosted with 5 million euros. And this money is allocated to finish and finalize all the outstanding projects, including those ones that are in Kunene region. So we are glad to report to you that in a set of these projects that we are handing over in this month, approximately 25 projects that's from Kunene, Erongo, and Omaheke region are going to be handed over. It gives us peace and pleasure to realize that these facilities will be available for the schools and the community to make use of them for the benefit of specifically our children. There is a saying goes that the children are the future. And if we don't take good care of them today, we would not have future leaders, and our future is blank. By providing them with a conducive learning environment, it encourages the nation to grow through skills development that would one day take us where we want to be, like we are envisaging that in 2030, we want to be an industrialized nation we want to be a country that is developed by our own human resources. As the governor of the Gunene region, I would like to thank the German government for this generous support. I'm, I'm grateful on behalf of the governor of the Gunene region, Agerika Muharukwa, to accept these facilities. It's a small gesture, but it is a gesture. It's something. It's something tangible. These buildings will be here 50 years down the line. It is my wish that this center will provide educational and recreational activities to both young and the elderly. The completion and handing over of this Omakete Makepo Center so that the Rua traditional authority wouldn't have been realized without the financial support from the government of the Federal Republic of Germany. I'm very happy to be here with you today to receive this modern multi-purpose cultural center. On behalf of the Rua traditional authority, I feel honored, humble and deeply moved that our effort to develop and improve the life of our community and people has been a resounding success and that our people can benefit immensely from such modern facility. I'm here <coughs> now to thank the triple to show that we are handing over this multiple center to Omakete and to the Derua Traditional Authority. And 
And from here, I'm going to start this ribbon. So the traditional authority to receive such a, a, a high class facility means it's a responsibility in the first place to look after it and also use it wisely in sustainability so that the community can gain more out of it. This center is planned for a multi-purpose where people can come together as organizations, as community themselves having their traditional festivals, having their cultural events, and even other community-based activities that community likes to uh, jointly uh, 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 exercise in this area. And on behalf of my community, the NGC program is one of the most important uh, uh, programs in Namibia and that is an agreement between, between the German government and our government. And it's special initiative programs that uh, need to be supported by the communities so that they can enjoy the fruit of that uh, uh, agreement of our government. I'm very, very happy that we could get these uh, facilities uh, from the Namibian German Special Initiative. and. Uh, we plan in the future to have events here at these facilities. We will hire out a, a community hall to uh, many uh, facilities like weddings, conference, and community gatherings. But we'll put up a management budget. We got it already. We plan it in the business management, which the RICE uh, trained us. So we will see to it that we will generate more income. From the bungalows we got two. We actually asked for five, but we got it two. The little we can manage. And what I talked to my uh, chief is, in the coming events, from our sites, the uh, generation that we are coming, uh, the income that we are getting, we must build more accommodation and then cooling facility. This is what we are struggling for. Well, if we talk about this project here in Utsep, um, I think this is a very good example how things can be done, uh, how things can be run. And I'm very happy to see that this project has been developed from the ground in cooperation with the local community, with the traditional authority. Therefore, we made sure that we put something into place which is for their service, which they want, and which they hopefully will make a good use out of it. Like the Deputy Minister said, now it's, we put in houses. Now it's up to them to put in life. Life, be it education, business, administration, culture, you name it. But it is up to them to fill it with life, to maintain it, to make good use of it. We just gave the conditions. And now it's up to them. <laughs> The reason for us to hand over these two schools is to accord our learners the facilities to learn from. There is power in giving than receiving. Therefore, we are also going to emulate what he did by recognizing the efforts that have been put forth by our people within our community. Previously, we had learners that has been traveling distances from home to go to school. The nearest school was Corridor 13. And as a result, the living standard of our people, the marginalized people, they could not always make it to take their children to school. Now that the school has been brought to them, uh, probably it's a matter of you know, a kilometer or two with other places. So I think it will bring benefit to the people. We'll be having an educated nation. We'll be having some communities that also uh, are educated. Here is the nation. Masi, Masi, Poma Hongero Post, Yogu Jaman, a putulim, Bamaduanga, Gutido, Uambi, Gawa, and Dumba, Hongan, Gutiaku, who come racing up on the 
Mimi ponda ni sini ni mena ruku ya ruhe mai penduka kuna et gai kai na umano bunga ipenduka kuna et inu umundo umundo shere muenda mosina ihe umaje juu hindo umaje juu hina guta umaje chai kusina hina kukongolea guta ra mudo pia umaje mwa zindo sina mungi ramu oja tatu shere bo arika na ruhe inga tuweke huko jamu jamu jiti jina juu 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 mwa upume jana ni sini ni kuhoramendi. We really benefited a lot from the German Special Initiative. We got four classes. Where in the past, um, migratory learners were attending the afternoon classes. So now they will start uh, coming in the morning like all the other learners. So it is also a benefit even to the parents to send their school early in the morning. You know, sometimes when the, the, the school is in the afternoon, Learners are tired. If they have to attend to the classes, they get a, get um, asleep while the teacher is teaching. We also benefited from getting three extra blocks where now the learners will sleep freely, not those many learners overcrowded in, in one room. So that is also a benefit what uh, we receive. And on top of that, we also got a library where learners will now get chance to go read. Um, even the outsiders, the community, if they feel like having um, maybe in, um, those NAM called students, they, if they feel like um, having an assignment, they can come to the library and they can um, have um, their nice time there doing their assignment and so on. We really appreciate the Namibian General Initiative for this gesture because we really needed it. Yeah. And uh, I know it was not so easy also for them to build this because it took so long, really long. But uh, really at the end, it's, it's, it's really a good gesture that they gave us. And we really appreciate them. And we promise to look after it and to use it wisely. Since um, it was a project that was initiated by uh, the community of Berkeley themselves, um, everything they wanted or they needed lie, lies with, uh, within them. Um, so I think um, they will benefit a lot. Um, the livelihood would obviously change, um, more especially the youth, um, because um, we believe that uh, it, it, it is not, we believe it is a youth initiative after all, and um, knowing that majority of the young people in this uh, community are unemployed and also unskilled, you know, income gener generating projects will be run here and also um, trainings will be done here. So the youth will directly benefit from it because they will be trained and, um, for example, into computer training, um, most of them, you know, haven't sat in front of a computer, for example. So this facility will give them, you know, that opportunity to come sit in front of a computer and also be part of, you know, whatever is going. I'm being a Karukwa in the Gold in Noso Province School and I'm in grade 7 I think that the learners will be much more happier, especially the dropout, that now they will have the opportunity to come here and have the opportunity to learn to learn something out of this because there is a lot of job out, out of the school, the learners that leave school and I think that now they will have the opportunity to come here and come and study, benefit something from the teachers. On behalf of the people of this region, wholeheartedly thank the German government for this donation and I hope that um, you know we will be developing our country uh, with the assistance that we got and then we'll be having an educated nation. We cannot, you know, develop the country or even the region if we do not have uh, educated people. It gives satisfaction to note that all the projects were completed as planned. But above all, what makes one happy is when the community members are excited in receiving these projects. When they are, have contributed and are contributing to the fact that they, these projects came to improve their livelihoods. These projects are there for them and uh, 
the best thing about it is that the community made their own selections in terms of which projects they prefer. Though at a certain extent they were guided, because sometimes their choices were not compatible to their needs, they were only guided, but the overall decision, the final decision was theirs. And at the end of the day, they chose the projects that were to benefit their respective needs in their respective area of residence. We would uh, apply uh, most of the strategies used in the program. Of course, there were lessons learned where we need to improve or modify a bit to suit uh, the Namibian environment. Uh, one example I can cite is the, the, the planning, the planning and the designing. And in terms of planning, uh, the program uh, came up with the steering committee that was composed of uh, representatives from various line ministries uh, who uh, provided their valued input to the implementation of the program. Uh, I think uh, uh, that in itself, to me, it's good, it's something worth considering because uh, these representatives from various line ministries uh, they will mainly bring in the aspect of uh, uh, marrying what the community wants and the priorities of the country. Uh, secondly, um, in terms of uh, the design, I would say uh, th there was a, a good uh, consultation between the, 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 the technical people, the, the program experts, and the communities to an extent where uh, communities were allowed to bring more input in order uh, for the projects uh, to be designed according to their needs. Therefore, uh, this uh, created a sense of ownership for the communities and we think it's something which uh, 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 Namibia or future programs uh, should inherit. This program, um, we have, I mean, this is, was a special program, as the name says, which was set aside to the re normal bilateral development cooperation, which continues to run, which was just redecided at the beginning of October, and for, for another two years, with the overall amount of roughly 70 million euros. Um, so that continues, irrespective of uh, the fact that a program, this special program, which had been initiated for a specific amount of t money, for specific uh, time frame, and uh, both has been reached now. The money has been spent, or almost spent. What we make sure is that we don't leave any ruins behind us. We will, we have uh, committed another several million euros, but only for the purpose of finishing those projects that are still ongoing. We just want to wrap up in order to make sure that this program comes to a good end and then we'll talk further. But for this program, we are closing, we're coming close to the end. Also in the future, as uh, our role is to plan for the community members out there and for the growth of Namibians' economy, it's our role, it's our responsibility to go back and look at the additional needs should there be funds? Should there be any other possible means where we can grow those specific projects that we have put up? We will time and again be going back to monitor and should we get more funds to expand on the existing projects and that will be done based on the needs of those respective communities.